So you've bought your first full suspension bike, you've been on a hardtail, obviously they've got more moving parts and things to keep on top of. So here are five things to look out for on your first full suspension bike. Obviously one of the biggest differences with your new bike to the, compared to the hardtail is this rear shock. They do need servicing, so try and keep on top of that. Check for the condition of the shaft, make sure it's not got any scratches on it, and there's no oil coming from this seal. If either of those things are present, then get it serviced. In normal sort of running of the bike, just make sure it's nice and clean, and you don't let mud and dirt build up around that seal. Shocks have bushes in the ends where they mount to the frame. They're like plastic sleeves that the bolt goes through and they move around when the suspension moves. So they do wear out. So to check those, a really easy way is just to hold the bat wheel onto the floor and just pull up on your seat. There shouldn't be any movement or any knocking in there. Or just bounce the bike on the floor and put your finger on that bolt and on the shock. And again, you shouldn't feel any movement. So there's one at the top and one at the bottom on this bike. They're nice and tight, which means the bike's gonna feel nice. The next thing to look at is your suspension setup. And we've done a really advanced video on that exact thing. And the link to that video will be in the description below this video. So check that one out. But simply put, you want to set the sag and the rebound of that shock. To set the sag, I'll use the rubber ring that's on there and slide it all the way up so it touches on the shock's main body. And to lower myself onto the bike, so all my weight, it's going through that rear wheel. And you're looking for about 30% sag. So you're gonna to have to play around with the air pressure in your shock, so that's about 30%. Next thing is rebound. So you want the shock not to just spring back without any damping. You want some control on that rebound. Too slow and it won't rebound in time, but too fast and the bike will be really kicky. So play around with that dial. On this bike, it's this red dial up on the shock. Clockwise, winding it in will slow that shock down. Anti-clockwise will speed it up. So just play around. So the rear swing arm that moves the shock will move on bearings. So there's bearings in each pivot. So there's something else to look out for and just to keep on top of. A good way of checking the condition of those bearings is to grab the bike, hold onto the saddle and just wobble that rear wheel. You need to make sure the rear wheel's nice and tight, all those spokes aren't flexing about. And then I'm just looking for any movement in the rear end, looking against this linkage against the frame, and there really isn't any movement in there, so I know my bearings are in really good condition. So give that a wobble, there shouldn't be much play at all side to side in that rear end. An easy way of checking each bearing individually is just by taking the rear end apart slightly so that you're isolating each bearing so that I'm moving one, you know, sometimes you can just take the one shock bolt out just so that swing arm moves nice and freely and just feel the frames you're moving them to check there's no rumbling or any roughness in those bearings and make sure they're all nice and tight whilst you're doing this. So this feels really nice and smooth. Like I say, you can work through the pivots, do that individually and check that all those bearings are in good condition. Something else to bear in mind with full suspension bikes is you may get a little bit of chain growth. By that I mean when the suspension is going down, that can sometimes pull the chain tighter and it depends on the design of the rear suspension you have, but it's worth bearing that in mind. Obviously the hardtail is a fixed rear end, the chain won't grow at all, but just double check. I've let the air out of my shock and I'm just pushing down. With it in the lowest gear, I need to make sure that I still have enough chain that the chain doesn't go fully tight before I've bottomed out that rear shock. The same goes for cables and hoses. I've got a rear brake hose and my gear cable down there, and I need enough slack in those to allow for that rear suspension move. And finally, a lot of shocks now have extra technology that are really gonna help you out. This RockShox Monarch has got a lockout lever that goes from open to middle, to firm and the firmer you have it the better that bike's going to pedal it's not going to bob around quite so much so that's really good if you're doing long climbs you can whack it all the way up to locked sometimes you can have that mounted on the handlebars so you don't have to reach down to do it as well as that my canyon strive has this shapeshifter technology that actually moves the geometry from steep 
which is good for riding uphill, to slack, which is much better for riding downhill. So there you go, there's five things to look out for when you buy your first full suspension bike. And if you found this video useful, give us a big thumbs up down below, that'd be great. And for more videos from GMBN, you can click up here for our suspension setup explain video, or click down here for how to descend like a pro. Or click on me to subscribe to GMBN.